Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 5-6 from the Forrester textbook. We are skipping 5-5 and only gonna be doing 5-6 uh, next. So get out your pen and paper, we're gonna take some notes here and we are gonna develop a bunch of formulas, most of which, actually all of which I have songs for. So we're gonna do Three different things today. We're gonna to talk about double angle formulas after we build them. We're going to talk about power reduction formulas and we're going to use half angle formulas. Now that sounds like a lot, but as you're about to see, they're all amazingly related. Okay, so step one is for us to make the double angle formula. So what we need to do is we need to think about what is a double angle. Well, a double angle is just where the angle has been doubled. So for example, what is sine 2x? Well, you could think about the graph is something with a period half as wide as it would be normally, but we also sometimes need to be able to turn this into other things. So how can you make 2x? Well, it's simply x plus x. What we're doing is we're saying sine of x plus x and now you can see that this is a sine sum of angles. This is where we're just adding two things. So you remember the sine swing, where we say sine, cosine, and a cosine, sine. And then we fill in the angles. The first angle, the second angle, the first angle, the second angle. And then sine is the one that is well behaved and plus stays plus. So sine x times cos x plus cos x times sine x, that's really the same thing. That's really, the, that's like saying a, b, a times b plus b times a. That's really the same thing twice. So what you have is two sine x cos x. And that is the sine double angle formula. That's where we're just gonna have the same angle twice doubled and then we can find a way to turn that into just one. All right, so what about cosine 2x? Well, again, we're gonna use the sum of angles, which we developed before. Which song helps us with this? The cosine conga. So we write cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And then we write the first angle and the second angle, first angle, second angle. And cosine is the naughty one that flips. So a plus over here turns into a minus over there. Now what's a better way to say cosine times cosine? Anything times itself, that's what we invented the symbol squared for. So cos squared x minus sine squared x. That's the cosine double angle formula. But if you remember, we had definitions that we learned with that first trig identity about what is cos squared equal to. So the, the first trig identity we ever learned back in the day was that sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So that meant that if we just juggled pieces around that uh, cos squared is equal to one minus sine squared. So let's, let's do that here. Let's substitute in one minus sine squared for cos squared. See, I'm just taking this formula right here and I'm grabbing this part of it and I'm substituting that cos squared for what it is uh, in the Pythagorean identity. And so now we've got one minus sine squared minus sine squared. So whatever this crazy business is here, we've got two of them. So it's, you can abbreviate that as one minus two sine squared x. What if I substituted it the other way? What if instead of substituting away the cos squared, what if I substituted the sine squared? If I said that we've got cos squared x minus, and then what is sine squared equal to? Well, sine squared in this equation is equal to one minus cos squared, and then I have to distribute the minus sign, and I get minus one and plus, and now the first and the last piece are the same. I've got cos squared x plus cos squared x, so I can abbreviate that as two cos squared x. So you see there are really three versions of the uh, cosine double angle formula. This, is, this can be a lot to memorize. I've got a song, we're gonna be singing Old McDouble Angles Farm. There's a link to the video up there. But these, these three pieces here 
Depending upon the situation that you find yourself in, some of these are more useful than others. You might be in a spot where you're like, okay, I've got cos 2x, but I need to have everything in terms of sine, or I need to have everything in terms of cosine, or I don't really care, and I, either one would work. So these three different pieces, they have different situations where they are useful. So I know it's a lot to memorize. The song will help you. We'll sing that here in a minute. Lastly, what about tangent 2x? Same thing, we've got tan x plus x, and then we sing the tan tan. So we've got tan a plus or minus tan b uh, all over one minus tan a times tan b. And so here, instead of a and b, we've just got x and x and x and x. We've got the same angle all over the place. So what's tan x plus tan x. Anything plus itself is two times it. And then on the bottom, tan x times tan x is tan squared x. So those are the three double angle sets. There's one for sine, three for cosine, one for tangent. All right, the second big thing that we're gonna to try to work on today are what are called the power reduction formulas. So sometimes when you've got a trig function and it's got an exponent on it, that just makes life super difficult and you wanna get rid of that. So these times you, you wish you had some way to turn sine squared into anything else or to turn cos squared into anything else. And what you'll need is those two formulas that we developed in the last section. In the last section, we said that cos 2x might be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, or cos 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. Both of those have particular uh, uses. Squared. All right, so in the first case here, let's get sine squared alone. What we're looking for, what we're wanting, is a way to turn sine squared into anything else. And so if we uh, subtract one from both sides, then we get that uh, cos 2x minus one equals negative two sine squared 2x. And now if we divide by negative two, we can see, and I'm gonna move this part over here, that sine squared x is equal to one minus cos 2x over two. This is gonna be very useful to you as far as getting sine squared to be equal to anything else, to bring it down and get rid of that exponent. Same thing over here, let's isolate this cos squared. So we're gonna add one to both sides and we get cos 2x equals two, or plus one, equals two cos squared x. Divide by two, and then let's rewrite it the same way that we rewrote the other one, with the squared angle, squared trig over here, and then the one first. Okay, so here you can see we've got two power reduction formulas. We've got one to take sine squared down to something easier, and one to take cos squared down to something easier. So there's gonna be a song right here that you'll be able to sing along uh, with me, and that will help you to memorize these sine squared and cos squared. The interesting thing, though, is that if you wanted to try to say, well, what is uh, sine x times cos x? Because sine squared, you remember, is sine x, sine x, and cos squared is cos x, cos x. But what about sine x, cos x? Well, you remember just a minute ago, we developed the formula that sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x, cos x. So all we have to do is move this 2 over, and we can see that sine x, cos x is equal to 1 half sine 2x. That's really not that hard to see. Again, all of these come from just manipulating the double angle formulas. All right, last set of equations for today are the half angle formulas. So you saw just a minute ago that we had the power reduction formulas where we said that sine two or sine squared x 
uh, is equal to one minus cos two x over two, and that cos squared x is equal to one plus, yes, cos squared x is equal to one plus cos two x over two. And you can see that this angle is equal to half of that angle. Or you could think of it another way, that this angle is double that angle. So let's just rename these pieces. Let's just move stuff around. And let's say, let capital A equal to 2x. That would mean that we can rewrite the right side as 1 minus cosine of A over 2. How are we going to be able to rewrite the left side? If A is equal to 2x, then x is equal to a over 2. So that means that this side is equal to sine squared of a over 2. Now, to get a just regular half angle formula, we just need to take the square root of both sides, and we get that sine a over 2 is equal to plus or minus square root 1 minus cos a over 2. Now that plus or minus sign is tricky. It doesn't mean what it often means, which is both plus and minus. It means that you need to be smart enough to be able to tell which is it. So that if like we started in the third quadrant, right? So somewhere between 270 and 180, what's gonna happen when we cut that angle in half? Well, half of 270 is 135 and half of, uh, 180 is 90, so we're going to be somewhere in this zone where sine is always positive. So if you start it off down here in the third quadrant, when you cut that in half, your answer for sine should be positive. So you have to be able to think about it and say, is my answer positive or negative? I need to, to think about that and decide which whether I'm going to go with positive or negative myself. So it's not just both or one or the other, it's you have to arbitrate, you have to decide and figure out which is appropriate. Same thing over here, we can let a equal 2x and we will get cos squared a over 2 equals plus or minus square root 1 plus cos a over 2. Oops, I just did the square root. And <clears throat> that's the cosine half angle formula. Now the tangent half angle formula is a little bit more arbitrary. You could stack these on top of each other, but if you do that and you juggle uh, trig identities around, you'll get that the tangent half angle is 1 minus cos uh, over sine, or it is equal to sine over 1 plus a cos. So again, I've got a song for you to be able to learn these half angle formulas. I hope you like the Beatles. And just to recap, we learned three different things. We talked about how you can build the double angle formulas by just adding the same angle to itself. You can use those two further derived cosine double angle formulas to create the power reduction formulas. And then those power reduction formulas, you just take the square root of both sides and change the numbers a little bit and you get the half angle formulas. So really these are all very, very easy to derive from the cosine or sine or tangent sum of angles. This is not that complicated. I know it looks like a lot on paper, but if you sing the songs and recognize where they come from, it's not too terrible to think about. So practice the songs and be ready to sing in class three different sets of songs. See you soon.